are seen blurred out. The author of this beautiful piece of music uh, hails from Congo Brazzaville. His name is Olus Mabele, King of Sukus. The artist uh, passed on in 2020, but his works live on. Well, it's said that musicians do not pass away because their works are always alive. And so that piece of music has brought a time to 22 minutes past 11 here in the studio of Apex One Radio. It's Friday, the 18th of November, 2022. Just 12 days. Oh, is it 13 days? No, 12. 12 days to the end of the 11th month of the 2000 22nd year after the birth of Christ. We are in November of 2022. It's a beautiful Friday here in the city of Columbus. Though temperatures are quite low, but we're used to it. And so, if you're just joining us, thank you so much. This is Apex One Radio. We are live from the Midwestern regions of the United States of America, precisely in the H old city of Columbus, the chief city of the state of Ohio, and we are in the United States of America. My name is Ernest. Marcel is in Germany, precisely in the H old city of Vassal, controlling the broadcast digitally from that end. It's another edition of On Board with Ernest Kanjo, that is at the of starting here on radio today. And so once again, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. We apologize for the late start of the program, but we are here to have it with you. So if you are ready, my team is ready. The guest is already with us live in the studio. And so thank you once again. This is On Board with Ernest Kanjo, the edition of November the 18th. Let's go.
Professionals who speak to inspire and motivate other people hold strongly that every human being is born with countless talents. They further let their audience understand that even without formal training, some people can become amazingly skillful. Of course, there are naturally dexterous people who only need to place their hands on anything and these things are transformed into incredible outcomes. As good as specialization could be, the ability to thrive in as many disciplines as possible is always an additional value to every visionary professional, especially in the current context that is today's fast evolving world. Now, little doubt that a professional in nursing yesterday is excelling in cybersecurity today. Little doubt that as amazing journalist yesterday, he is a succeeding entrepreneur today. Oh, would you doubt that as a successful teacher yesterday, she is a highly acclaimed fashion designer today? We now see these transformations because the world itself is changing and doing so without an iota of shame for not wanting or leaving anyone behind. The engine must roll, and adapting to new environments, new visions, new technologies, and new circumstances has become the goal. Now, the only other issue holding the world back is the inability to explore these God-given talents and, to an extent, skills. Understandably, the means are not always readily available. Means here could mean finance, material, human, time, environment, and you name them. When these and many more factors are not positioned rightly, exploring our talents could be very limited. However, the zeal to exceed and hit the bar would definitely dismantle all odds, no matter how odd these odds are. It takes people with a huge supply of determination to turn the tables, and of course, you can tap this zeal if you really desire to do so. It takes telling yourself you can do it once you think it. At that point, you can cut across several disciplines, and why not excel in all of them? Now, if you are finding this thesis hard to understand, her example could be a clear means to do so. She's one of such highly inspired people who know nothing else but how to make it happen. To her, it is either it works or it works. Otherwise, it should work, and as a matter of fact, it must work. Blessing Akiko is a mover and shaker, and the best example of someone who makes things work. She spans across several domains and still thinks the journey to know and do more is ongoing. Blessing is an entrepreneur, a TV host, an excellent event communicator or MC a trainer at corporate level, a motivational speaker, a book author, transformational leader, and the list can continue. Now, the thinker and doer has a story that is good enough to give birth to more movers and shakers. The founder of Blessing Ekiko Global Impact accepted to ride with us on this radio journey and promised that at the end of our destination, or oh, by the time we get to our destination, we would be transformed people. She's the main passenger on board this radio ride, and she's right here with me in the studio, ready to journey with us on the show. And so, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you find yourself across the globe. Welcome to this fresh edition of On Board with NS Kando. During this time, we will be telling another interesting story, a story that is meant to have you stand up and start moving. Like I said, she's right here with me, live in the studio of Apex One Radio. She'll be yours in just 
Im Moment, don't go away. Also, thank you once again for joining us on Apex One Radio. This is a fresh edition of uh, On Board with NS Kanjo that is, uh, has just begun at exactly 29 minutes to 12 here in the studio of Apex One Radio. Let's see how the journey fares. And by the time we get to our destination, we would have had something to put in our bags. And at this point in time, I am bringing the main passenger on board this radio ride. Bless and welcome to the program. How are you doing today? Thank you very much, Ernest. It's a great pleasure being here. I'm feeling quite okay. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, um, a beautiful day to all of our viewers and listeners out there. Mm. It's a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever one it is. <laughs> Perfect. So wherever you are across the globe, greetings from our main passenger on board this radio ride. Blessing the Kiko is her name. She spans in so many areas. Usually it's, uh, it's, it's hard to, to, to know from what direction to begin a conversation <laughs> with somebody like this because she's just everything, right? Uh, she spans across the board. Uh, how do you manage to do all of that? <laughs> um, it may sound cliche, mm -hmm. but I would say God Almighty, because mm -hmm. some people always go like, "Why do you? What do you mean by God?" Mm -hmm. Of course, it's God, because at the end of the day, I am only who I am today because He has made it so. Mm -hmm. If He didn't will it so, I will not be all of these things you called. Right, and it's not been easy actually. Um, sometimes it looks like it's effortless, but mm -hmm. it isn't. Because it comes with a lot of um, pain, struggle, sometimes rejection. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you do enjoy the journey and sometimes you don't. Well, um, you heard it from her. In the course of this radio journey, uh, we would listen to a story that has probably not been told on Apex One Radio yet. A story you would like to go back and listen to again. And again, well, um, there's a of people out there who know you already, some of uh, whom have worked with you, um, others who've been inspired and motivated by you. But then there are also others who are coming across Blessing the Kiko for the very first time. For the sake of those ones, may you reintroduce yourself. Where were you born and where did you grow up? Okay, Blessing was born in um, Bota Limbe. Okay. Yes, um, that is in Cameroon, for those who do not know me. Yes, Bota Limbe, Cameroon, Southwest region, Cameroon. Mm -hmm. It, um, I think I was born there. Mm -hmm. I grew up within that span, okay. but moved a lot mm -hmm. because of my father's um, career. So he had transfers coming in, so we had to move. Mm -hmm. When it comes to where I studied, primary school, Blessing went to P.S. Danvich Limbe. Okay. <laughs> and I we called it small university at the time mm -hmm. because P.S. had this, this um, thing where the, the pupil who leaves P.S. Danvich Limbe mm -hmm. is usually a little over the other students from okay. or other people from other primary schools. Mm -hmm. Not because our teachers were too good, but it was pretty strict. Mm -hmm. All right, I moved from P.S., moved to, I think, P.S. Kumba, P.S. Kumba Town. Mm -hmm. Yes, and like I said, that was transferred a lot. So I've been to, for secondary school, I've been to PCSS Boya, mm -hmm. PGSS Limbe, um, what's the other one again? PHS Batibo. Wow. <laughs> I've been to Diligent Bilingual Academy. I've been to PHS Kumba. Mm -hmm. So the, you can imagine, the list goes on. But please, I was not dismissed. Mm -hmm. I was just moving with my father. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. Okay. Then went to the university, of course, for my first degree mm -hmm. in the University of Boya, mm -hmm. Department of Linguistics. Okay. Went on to do a master's in the same university, mm -hmm. a master's in applied linguistics. Okay. And presently completing a doctorate 
mm-hmm. that's a PhD in applied linguistics, still wow. in the University of Boya. Hmm. That's a very rich um, academic profile. So uh, we have as passenger on this radio show, someone who knows uh, from where she's coming and, and definitely from uh, to where uh, she's, um, she's going. Blessing Kiko is her name, main passenger on board with Ernest Kind of this day, November the 18th, 2022. Linguistics, why linguistics in the first place? Funny enough, I didn't know what linguistics was before okay. studying it. But I recall that when I was getting into the university, mm-hmm. there was a friend of mine who was already there, of course, mm-hmm. Julius. And we had to discuss. Okay. He was studying journalism. Mm-hmm. And everyone was like, okay, it could be journalism. And people are like, oh, go study literature and things like that. Mm-hmm. But then when I got to UB, and I took the form to look at what was there, there was something called linguistics. And I was like, linguistics. Mm. So from the onset, I thought it was English and French. Okay. And that's what many people think. But linguistics is not about studying English and French. It's okay. not bilingual letters. So I didn't know what it was. Mm-hmm. I got in. And by the time I did, I would say I loved it. Mm-hmm. Else I wouldn't have gone this far with it. I loved it because we had biology, physics, we had math. Hold on. <laughs> you sound as if linguistics is much more intense, and that's what I would assume. Yeah. But you're talking linguistics, which uh, I would definitely think has something to do with language. But now you're talking biology, you're talking <laughs> mathematics. So what is the difference between linguistics and ordinary l- or language? Mm. Yes. Now, with English, we study, it's a science of languages. Okay. okay? So, language comes in play. Mm-hmm. So, with linguistics, we break it down. Okay. We look at how languages are structured, mm-hmm. how they are used, mm-hmm. where they are used, and their users. Okay. And when you come to talk about, let me say, studying English and French, you may just be looking at proficiency, how mm-hmm. to perform the language Mm -hmm. but with linguistics you need to understand why the language is the way it is okay so that's a science of language now when we talk about biology like if i should ask you Mm -hmm. ernest you must have come across people who if they should hear a certain sound Mm -hmm. or let's say physics Mm -hmm. let me say screeching sound some people say i have goosebumps okay others say oh my teeth Mm-hmm. It dies. Mm-hmm. There is a perception of that sound. Okay. So that's where we get into, when we get into ling- applied linguistics, mm-hmm. we start studying acoustics. Wow. You know, you start looking at waves when, when, when I speak to you, mm-hmm. why you perceive it differently. And we talk about biology. You hear through the ears. Mm-hmm. You have to see the viewer. Mm-hmm. When you see the viewer, that is your eye. Mm -hmm. You speak with your mouth. So these are all organs of the body. Okay. And they all manifest in different Mm -hmm. ways. So basically linguistics is a science of all languages and not just some Mm -hmm. languages. And then when you get to applied linguistics, you start taking it now into different domains. In in academics, Mm -hmm. in medicine, like speech pathology, that is where my interest is, clinical linguistics. Mm -hmm. So many people just know it's just linguistics, but there's clinical linguistics, there's forensic linguistics, Mm -hmm. there is um, business linguistics. So you have all those thoughts under one umbrella. Hmm. Beautiful. She's coming from a linguistic uh, uh, background as far as training is concerned. And she's just been educating us on the difference between linguistics and ordinary language use. You're listening to On Board with Anas Kanjo. We are riding with um, uh, a young professional who jacks in everything, yet she masters every little thing she does. Ikiko Blessing is her name. She's live on Apex One radio this day and the show is on board with Anas Kanjo. Do not go away. Our current passenger is uh, Blessing uh, Kiko. She's here live with me in this studio. 
you are a TV host as well. Um, tell us when you became a TV host and what inspired you. Okay. Now, when it comes to TV presenting, mm -hmm. I must mention that um, going with linguistics, of course, I just found out what linguistics was mm -hmm. at the university. But then I minored in performing and visual arts. Mm. So I was pretty good at it. At some point, I literally thought I should move to PVA as okay. my major. But then I stopped with linguistics, though. Mm -hmm. So performing a visual arts, you get that you have to be very expressive. Mm -hmm. And I found it pretty easy. It came naturally for me. Whenever I had a camera in front of me, I would just flow. Okay. And it was kind of strange at the start for me. But then my, I remember my mom telling me, it's not strange. Why? She said, when I was a kid, I had a tendency of pulling the crowd. Mm -hmm. I had a tendency of pulling the crowd. Okay. So. Go ahead. All right. Yes. So I had a tendency of pulling the crowd whenever I spoke, no matter how small I was. Mm -hmm. So it came natural. For her, she thought it was natural. So sometime 2015, mm -hmm. that is August 2015, I had a conversation with someone who overheard me talking. I think I was reading something. And then they looked at me and asked. I think a friend of mine, Prosper Menko, mm -hmm. Prosper was like, blessing. I see the way you talk and everything. If there was a camera in front of you, will you still do this? I'm like, yeah, of course. He said, okay, there is a show. They're trying to pull, put together a team. And there is this vision they need to drive with. And with your core values and everything, you fit in perfectly. Right. I was like, okay, let's do this. And before I knew it, 8th of August, 2015, mm -hmm. I was sitting at um, Carlos, Residence Carlos, I think, at the time. Okay. In Boya. Mm -hmm. And we had the steam cameras all over the place, DOP, and a guest. And that's where I started. Wow. I started hosting that program. Um, that was Work, Forget About Joe. Mm -hmm. That was my first show. And then it started airing at uh, different local TV houses. We had CMTV. We mm -hmm. had other um, TV houses. We had Zoe TV. Mm -hmm. Now, when we got to Zoe... The, in fact, before I got to Zoe, the DOP on the very first day, mm -hmm. the DOP on the very first day actually recommended me, spoke to the manager at Zoe TV mm -hmm. and told them that there is this lady I met and while we were working, she's pretty good. So right. he referred me. And before I knew it, I was called and I was there. Mm -hmm. And we started doing the show there. Since the show was going to different local TV houses, it got to another that was high TV. Mm -hmm. And the manager called me sometime in 2017. Mm -hmm. That was two years down the line. Okay. Called me in 2017 and then asked me if I would be willing to take a show. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. I got to see him. And before I knew it, I was doing Girl's Talk. Wow, that's interesting. So um, you did high TV, you did Zoe TV, and the other show you you, you just talked about. Mm -hmm. How was this experience? And did, did did you leverage some of your skills in linguistics while um, doing t t t TV hosting? Just just tell us how the experience. Exactly, went. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that you you, you brought us there mm. because. They are all inter inter um, sorry interrelated. Okay. And linguistics, we have what we call sociolinguistics, mm -hmm. language in a given context, mm -hmm. how people relate with language and how language relates with people. Right. So given that presenting had to do with speaking mm -hmm. and had to do with a language, of course, I had to connect with an audience. First, the camera, I'm not shy of the camera. Um, but I needed to fashion my message okay. to fit my audience. Mm -hmm. So with Girl Stoke, I could meet up faster because I knew the audience Okay. with Base Pillar Foundation. Mm -hmm. 
Base Pillar Foundation is a non-profit organization which I founded. Mm -hmm. So we worked with teenage mothers, young boys who were dealing with drugs, mm -hmm. poor management of social media, not being able to build them healthy friendships anymore. Mm -hmm. So Girls Talk had something to do with that. So my experience was pretty good because I already had good resource persons okay. from the work we were doing in the field. Mm -hmm. Now with linguistics being my academic background, I flowed better at that level of language and presentation. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that directly answers your question. It does, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I flowed better with Girls Talk mm -hmm. because of my community work mm -hmm. and then going further to other tv programs which i did mm -hmm. hosting the breakfast show okay in Lilac mm -hmm. hosting the compass that was on high tv that was on high tv okay. in Lilac mm -hmm. meaning good morning like helen mm -hmm. yes so my mastery in what an audience should be how to relate a message which all came from linguistics mm -hmm. helped me in TV presenting and across the board, even with public speaking and more. Mm -hmm. We're speaking with um, the founder of Blessing Ekiko Global Impact, um, which is a business initiative. Uh, she's also coming from the civil society background, multidisciplinary, very talented. And of course, um, she's the guest in today's edition of the show. Just a fourth night ago, uh, like two and a half weeks ago, Blessing was uh, the MC at the premiere of Half Heaven, the movie which took place here in Columbus, Ohio, and uh, literally guests at that event left uh, the theater that day, uh, you know, showering praises on, on her due to the beautiful performance she put up at that event, and she's live here on Apex One radio telling a story that is definitely going to inspire someone out there if you're just joining us thank you so much and welcome to the program it's going to be more of uh, stories great stories to be told here on radio so you also happen to be uh, a motivational speaker and you do a lot of inspirational jottings especially on facebook every morning i get up i see one from you and <laughs> i mean they're so brilliantly package thank you great so how long have you been doing this um i think i've been doing this um since 2017 mm -hmm. but it picked up with the the way it was branded the way mm -hmm. it was presented mm -hmm. when i came to meet this brilliant coach of mine mm -hmm. michael adipo mm -hmm. he did an excellent job putting the different things I could do and okay. how I could come up with some of these write-ups. Mm -hmm. He put everything in a beautiful package. Okay. So we could now give it out in the form of quotes mm -hmm. where you can come up and then find that and inspires you. Mm -hmm. But one thing that inspires the posts, the quotes as well, right? is just everyday life. People out there are going through a whole lot of things. In fact, you are going through some things. I'm sure. going through some things. Mm -hmm. And I just feel that it is always helpful to wake up every morning and have something that you can go by. Okay. Something that can take you through that trying time. Mm -hmm. It could be work related. It could be family related. It could be academics. Mm -hmm. So if you notice a cut across the board. We could be talking about academics today, how to learn, mm -hmm. how to study, or I could be addressing aspects of um, personal development okay. or communication, which is usually the case for me, or also dealing with pain. Mm -hmm. Some of these things I have experienced firsthand, mm -hmm. and some of them have been experienced by people I have come across. Mm -hmm. Some have been experienced by the teenage mothers I've worked with over the years. Mm -hmm. And when I look at one person's situation, I feel that it connects with another person out there. So okay. I'm probably just the medium for which this message can go out. And lots of people get back to me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I drop a post and I leave it there. By the time I come back, maybe via messenger, 
someone has sent a message and it's like, you were addressing this and this is my problem. Right. What do you think I can do? I saw what you stated here. I have tried it, but I still find myself uh, wanting. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to say? And then I go on talking and I try to help where I can. Mm -hmm. Where I can't, I refer you mm -hmm. to someone who's more of an expert in the field. Mm -hmm. And and I have lots of those people. So I, I'm not, a, yes, I may fit into many shoes, but then there are some people who are professionally in tune mm -hmm. to helping people mm -hmm. in specific situations. Right. Yes. Beautiful. Um, so in a video you did nine days ago, uh, you focus on listening as one of the biggest tools in, 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 in communication. So are you saying a lot of people prefer to talk than to listen? And if they do, why do you think people would rather talk more than they listen? You know, funny enough, that is coming from someone who talks a lot. <laughs> you know, my work, my job, is to talk. Mm -hmm. So if I should say you should pause mm -hmm. and listen, then it's worth And as a matter of fact, it. you know, um is is it's an you know it's uh it's a common observation. A lot of people want to talk more than they really want to to listen. Is is it a human tendency and would you forgive people for that? Actually it's a human tendency. Mm -hmm. But you have people who have mastered their emotion that's emotional intelligence mm -hmm. they have good mastery of it okay. that they know when to stop okay when to keep quiet mm -hmm. and when to speak but this is it what inspired that is this every time you go to a person mm -hmm. you want them to listen to you mm -hmm. it's a human tendency that everyone wants to be heard okay everyone wants to be heard but the problem is if you keep speaking, mm -hmm. what then would you learn? Because you keep dishing out, but okay. you don't take in anything. Listening is a core aspect mm -hmm. of communication. Like I, I wrote there, I said, effective com communication minus listening mm -hmm. equal ineffective communication. <laughs> okay. And communi communication, rather, plus listening mm -hmm. equal effective communication mm -hmm. i said stop you need to pause listen process then give a response if necessary mm -hmm. why do we say this let's take a mentor mentee mm -hmm. relationship a mentee goes to a mentor to probably get a lot of experiences that this mentor has had so that they can at least up their game okay. as they are coming up. But mm -hmm. when you get to your mentor, you're the one going, you know, sir, actually, this is what has been happening. And, you know, I really like this. And the thing is that when I look at this other situation, is you now, would you not get tired of that if you were the mentor? Mm -hmm. I am literally speaking all through that conversation. And you have nothing to give me, which means you know it all. Let's so, some people speak more because you know they are being encouraged to to participate. So they feel as if if they do not speak, then they are not participating. Okay. The more you listen, mm -hmm. the more you understand. Okay. The more you speak, the more you give out what you know. But the question is, how much do mm -hmm. you know? No one has a monopoly over knowledge. Mm -hmm. There is someone who knows what you don't know. If they don't speak, you won't be able to know what they know. And if you don't listen, now there is a difference between listening and hearing. I okay. would love our viewers to get this. Mm -hmm. There is a difference between <clears throat> listening and hearing. and hearing. I could speak to you right now. And then you go, yes, 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 yes that's true. You heard me speak, but I did not listen to but you. But you didn't listen to me. Mm -hmm. When you listen, you can pick people's emotions. You can mm -hmm. tell if someone is upset. You can right. tell if they are faking it. Mm -hmm. You can tell a whole lot more mm -hmm. than when you just hear. If we are here and there is a car that is honing outside, we will hear it. Mm -hmm. If we listen keenly, 
you can even guess what kind of car it is because you paid attention. So listening goes with keen attention, paying mm -hmm. attention to what is said. Now, um, Ernest, I would just share something pretty little. Right. I'll give it in point form for mm -hmm. anyone who's watching mm -hmm. who would love to, to jot it down. It's mm -hmm. going to help you. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to listening, there are some barriers. This is what I teach even our, our trainees at Beggy. Mm -hmm. When someone is talking to you and all you have in mind is a preconceived idea, you can never process what they are giving to you the accurate way. Why? If I say biology is a study of soils, mm -hmm. I've said that that's just an example. Mm -hmm. You already have a preconceived idea that no, biology is about uh, cooking. Okay. So no matter how much I explain that it's about soils, mm -hmm. you will never get it because it's a preconceived idea. All right. So another one is you are experiencing um, an overload. Mm -hmm. information overload let's say your mind is going through a whole lot of things at the same time mm -hmm. you wouldn't listen to me and people practice this even in relationships mm -hmm. you find that you're trying to talk to your partner you're trying to talk to your daughter you're trying to talk to an uncle to an aunt mm -hmm. but they already have information overload right maybe they're thinking about their job maybe they're thinking about that bill they have to pay so at that moment, no one is listening to you. Mm -hmm. You are criticizing the speaker. I could be speaking right now, and there's someone out there who's only waiting for the moment I make a mistake. Okay. So what happens? Your focus is shifted. Mm -hmm. You are not listening to what I'm saying. You're trying to find an error. And if you focus so much on the negative, you will hardly find the positive. We also have getting distracted by emotional noise. We have getting distracted by external noise, mm -hmm. experiencing a physical discomfort. There is this example. Thank God my mom is not watching. Mm -hmm. There is this example. <laughs> she has this tendency when she's feeling hot, like the, the atmosphere is hot, mm -hmm. and you want to explain something very important to you at that moment. My mom will say, Agbo. She calls me by my native name, by the Agbo, Abek there is heat when she says there is heat it means don't continue right <laughs> no matter what you tell my mom at that moment mm -hmm. that heat has taken over mm -hmm. so there's a physical discomfort so basically i would have loved to go further but basically listening mm -hmm. is a key aspect of mm -hmm. communication which will help facilitate mm -hmm. the building of stronger bonds and great um, relationships both at your work site, in, at your family, or with your family, at work. Okay, I just mentioned that. At school. Mm -hmm. Yes. With your teachers. And please, just to mention, the fact that you are a coach or a mentor doesn't also mean you know it all. Mm -hmm. So even the coach and the mentor needs to practice effective mm -hmm. listening. Beautiful. This topic, um, listening, could go on and That's on. Right. Um, I was almost tempted to ask you that, um, would you blame the listener if mm -hmm. they cannot concentrate because the speaker is maybe boring? Okay, mm. That's a good one. Mm. That now will fall back to the speaker. Okay. Because the reason your listener, your interlocutor is not getting you or is not willing to Mm -hmm. is basically because you are probably boring mm -hmm. or you don't have mastery of the subject matter you are talking about. Mm -hmm. So this happens with MCs. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go MC in an event and you want to crack a joke when you're not funny, mm -hmm. your viewers, your audience go like, <laughs> when is she going to be done? Mm. Like, when is he going to be done? So in that case, we don't blame mm -hmm. the listener. But please just make an effort. There is no conversation that is useless. Mm. It just may not be in the right time, mm -hmm. the right timing, and at the right context. Beautiful. When we when we uh, get to MC, I'll probably come back to that <laughs> because it's a very interesting quiz, uh, question I would like to ask you. Yeah. About that. So um, she says... Um, 
always distinguish between listening and hearing. Yeah. Make sure you listen, right? That sound is what you hear, but <laughs> what you process is definitely what you uh, listen to. This is Apex One Radio. It's on board with Anas Kanjo. We are riding with uh, an intellectual par excellence, very brilliant, and of course, uh, she's um, an educator. Her name is uh, Blessing Ekiko. She's like on radio. All right, so um, looks like we've been talking uh, a lot. Maybe we have uh, some music for just uh, uh, one or two minutes, then we will come back. I was speaking with her off uh, uh, mic yesterday, and she said her preference is gospel music. Why? Like I said, my roots are in Christ. I okay. am unapologetically a Christian. <laughs> Beautiful. Right. So let's have uh, Anita Eta accompany us on this radio journey with this beautiful gospel piece. It's titled Alive. Is that going okay for you? Meantime, still to come, you will listen to someone who knows our guest so well. He has his own testimony about blessing a Kiko. He's also someone who uh, pulls some weight. He's called Dr. Jeff Nui Joy Bird. So he will live on radio just to talk about our guest this edition of On Board with Ernest Kanjo. For those of you just joined us, thank you so much for your time. Anita Eta in a live. Special thanks to you, Solomon Atta. You are in Johannesburg, South Africa, following the show from that end. Good afternoon to you, Jacob Ayuk, and thanks for joining us on the show as well. You're listening from one part of the city of Columbus. Then to you, Tata Nambeke the second. Thank you so much. I call him Presi. He's the president of the Ayole Columbus is um, the backward cultural group uh, just created here in the city of Columbus. Then to you, Bake Ivo Elango, I want to say thank you so much. You're following from Boya. This is Apex One Radio, and you're listening to On Board with Anas Kanjo. Our main passenger is Blessing Ekiko. Don't go away. Lion of Judah, King of Kings, uh, Anita Eta in Alive, music release uh, a couple of months ago. The artist was live on radio uh, to talk about 
uh, a convention that brought together musicians who do gospel music and who hail from Cameroon and who live in the United States of America. Six minutes past 12 here in the city of Apex One Radio. Special thanks to you, Talma Wilson. She's watching from Cameroon. Then to Noella Ayuk, I want to say thank you so much for joining us on the show. Same to you, Welly Sunny. Okay, this is Apex One Radio. This is on board with NS Kanjo. Do not go away. And our current passenger is Blessing Akiko. Blessing, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, how are you finding the journey so far? The journey is quite a beautiful one. I love the ride <laughs> and I love the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. So, Blessing is also a trainer. So, what do you train? Uh, yeah. What do you train? Tell us um, about that. Interpersonal and corporate communication okay. is my area of expertise. Mm -hmm. And um, also personal development. Okay. So we have aspects of um, um, personal delivery, um, sorry, personal discipline, mm -hmm. discipline, mm -hmm. um, dealing with pain. I keep saying this because I have dealt with some pain in life. Mm. So I end up trying to train people on mm -hmm. things like this also on tv slash screen presenting mm -hmm. um professional mc okay so you train people how to become tv host yes uh, how to become tv presenters yes. how to become mcs and so on yes in what form do you have this this this, this trainings uh, oh we do them online okay. and offline Mm -hmm. while back in cameroon we do one-on-one -on -one sometimes so you can have a one-on-one -on -one coaching mm -hmm. live or you can join in in any of our physical trainings mm -hmm. but most times we work with companies okay so you have a company was doing like team building mm -hmm. and then blessing the kicker global impact has to come in mm -hmm. we may handle the aspect of communication corporate communication okay internal communication mm -hmm. and all or we could deal with individuals at, a, at an individual level mm -hmm. And we also have team um, trainings. Mm -hmm. So it could be online, it could be offline. Mm -hmm. But most of our trainings have been mm -hmm. off, um, online rather. So you have them on Zoom. We mm -hmm. have Zoom sessions. We have WhatsApp. Okay. Yes. So you can have audio versions. You can have video mm -hmm. versions as well of these trainings. We have master classes okay. that people can take anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. Since you, you you mentioned corporate communication and maybe MC, I, I want to to to, to bring this uh, uh, conversation mm -hmm. uh, where a lot of people um, are doing some of these things without having been trained. Mm -hmm. um, like we've seen some excellent uh, MCs out mm -hmm. there. Then there's scores of young people who uh, now go for public relations officers yeah. and, and, and and so on, probably without being trained. Mm -hmm. So uh, some of these people are doing well and they're asking, do we need to be trained formally to become good MCs, to become good PROs? You know, I'm not too inclined to certificates. Okay. Some people may think that they need a certificate to back the knowledge. Mm -hmm. However, if the knowledge you, you are using is wanting, then you need further training. Okay. Like I say, you, you may know something, but you don't know everything. I go for trainings as well. Mm -hmm. I literally register for online trainings and physical trainings. I have coaches and I have mentors. Mm -hmm. That means that I'm still getting knowledge okay. on what I'm on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But if you are an MC and you're doing pretty well, mm -hmm. I think you can know more from the undiluted feedback from your audience. Okay. Highlight on undiluted. Meaning, if they can tell you the pros and the cons, okay. they can critically tell you, at this point, maybe we in the audience felt this way. Mm -hmm. I do that with TV presenting. Okay. I always get feedback. Mm -hmm. 
So if you get this feedback and you feel that you need to up your game, of mm -hmm. course, there are trainings like this. I would encourage it. Mm -hmm. I've had couple a couple of um, ambassadors, we call them ambassadors, okay. trainees who had been doing some work. Mm -hmm. And when they came in, I remember one of them saying, coach, I have never really looked at this um, format you gave. Okay. I spoke about audience, content, context, concept. Now, I'm not going to do a lot of explanation of that before, mm. you know, that would be <laughs> you know, we're saying, you? Who are being unfair mm. to, <laughs> to those who are paying for it. Mm. Anyway, why do you need your audience? You need to know who your audience is to be able to know the content you will deliver. Right. And then you fashion this content to fit into a context. The way I will speak in Ohio, Columbus, is not the way I will probably speak in Texas. Sure. It's not the way I will speak in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. The way I spoke in Douala is not the way I spoke in Boya. The way you speak to young people is not necessarily the way you speak Good. to, to, to uh, adults. So you find that mm -hmm. audience matters. Mm -hmm. It would fine-tune your content. Mm -hmm. And your context is also going to make you figure out what to joke about right. and what not to. Mm -hmm. And then you have a concept every event has a theme has a running message mm -hmm. something they are trying to pass across mm -hmm. so all of this will give you better mastery and mm -hmm. better delivery mm -hmm. as an mc as a speaker as a trainer whatever so if you find that and, you, and are you also wanting, have to prepare for unforeseen of course mm -hmm. Of course, you have to prepare for unforeseen mm -hmm. um, situations. Mm -hmm. Something can happen that you didn't plan for. Mm -hmm. There is something I usually do as an MC. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little, most of the people who know me, I always go with two dresses. Okay. I'm never with one outfit. Uh -huh. Why? I remember the day someone popped champagne <laughs> and it was popped on me. <laughs> so imagine that you are the impresario mm -hmm. and you have to be moving with the soil to dress. With no backup? No backup. Terrible. I always go with two of everything. everything That's why exactly. you see me come with a big bag. Right. And you're like, well, why is she carrying a lot? You mm -hmm. have no idea. Mm -hmm. you know. And then this preparation for unforeseen, uh, unforeseen situations or events will cause you to prepare more than you would right. if you did not consider that in the first place. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. really like a little tip mm -hmm. to all of those who are mm -hmm. trying to. But to answer the question, everyone still needs more knowledge. I'm still getting more knowledge. So in, in your in your experience, long years of experience, have you found out that this could be one of the problems MCs are facing? Like mm -hmm. uh, they are not knowing some of these details which you, you're yes. talking about. Lack of poor preparation mm. and inadequate knowledge. Mm. I have come to realize that not many MCs talk with their hosts mm -hmm. before they come on the or for that event mm -hmm. like when you invite me or when you ask me to serve you in this way at an event mm -hmm. i need to know a whole lot of things before mm -hmm. i get there mm -hmm. i need to know what kind of age group i need to know their intellectual background mm -hmm. i need to know the social status mm -hmm. Because hey, if you're dealing in the corporate, you're dealing with uh, corporate persons in mm -hmm. a corporate event. There are certain things you wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. There are certain mannerisms you wouldn't do. There is a way you will carry yourself. It's different from doing a birthday celebration. Mm -hmm. Same way, if you are doing um, anniversary, an anniversary. Let me say sixtieth mm -hmm. anniversary. Mm -hmm. It's not the same way you do a thirtieth anniversary. anniversary. Right. So. I think your question is really valid because lack of this knowledge and mm -hmm. paying attention to detail. Mm -hmm. um, some people don't work with their disc jockeys, the DJ. Yep. You just come and then you're like, oh, we don't have a mic. <laughs> like, how did you not know you were not going to have a mic? Mm -hmm. You needed to speak with this person. So poor preparation mm -hmm. and lack of knowledge on what is important mm -hmm. before getting 
to the event. And one of the things that is also uh, very important is information about the products you are coming to exactly uh, to, 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 to present to the public. If it's uh, maybe I can't a movie, be there and I don't, don't know what I'm product. talking about. Right. It's like going to a school and they ask you what school are you going to. You mm. can't say anything about your school. Mm -hmm. You know that the example I used to do. Whenever someone has to enroll into Beggy, mm -hmm. your very first task is to study the flyer. Mm -hmm. Now, when you come in, you realize that your question will be, what did you see on the flyer? That's the moment everyone is going to look at the flyer. Right. Because there are some information that are written there. These informations are written on the flyer, but you don't pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. You say, oh, excuse me, ma'am, how long will it be? I say mm. stated there two weeks. <laughs> what time? It is stated there. Please, mm. what's the venue? It is stated on the flyer. That's part of communication. You need to know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. So you need to know about the brand. You need to know about the product. You need to know about the company. You need to know about the individual who is inviting you. All right. So if uh, you have been hired to uh be event communicator at some launching or any uh, something you need to uh, do your homework know about the product know about the event know about the people who will be coming and a whole lot of other things and that is called preparedness everything you do you need to prepare just like uh, the show we are doing we've been talking about the show for the past exactly for the past couple of you do days, you do facts finding is, uh, I was amazed <laughs> when you sent me the, I'll, I'll call it questionnaire. Mm -hmm. Question protocol. And I was like, mm -hmm. I, I was saying it for any other person who is not in the field to mm -hmm. just understand. <laughs> yes, you know, when I looked at it, I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. I did comment and I told you. And I said, you have really done it. Like this is a <laughs> whole of blessing in mm -hmm. <laughs> one sitting. Mm. And it was amazing. And I did learn something from it. I go detailed, but I'm not as detailed All right. as you did. It was amazing. <laughs> well, um, you may be um, expert in whatever domain, but preparation is always the key. And like you yes. said, there's no superhuman. Uh, there are times, you know, I prepare a whole lot of things, I come on the airways <laughs> and I lose at least 36% of my intelligence, that happens. So That's you always have to be properly prepared. Mm -hmm. Don't take chances. You're listening to Apex One Radio. This is On Board with us, Kanjo. The radio journey, it's midway gone. We are looking at our destination and by the time we get there, we would have amassed a lot of intellectual wealth from an intellectual par excellence who happens to be our guest in today's edition of the show. What are some of the major events you've uh, uh, emceed mm, so far? Maybe we'll start with the most recent, mm -hmm. the movie premiere for Half Heaven mm -hmm. that held here. We've had um, the International Leaders Summit mm -hmm. that was in Cameroon. And then we had the same International Leaders Summit in Rwanda. Okay. That is um, Kigali, Rwanda. Mm -hmm. um, I've done other major events like um, that with Chimo at the time, mm -hmm. where we had a thousand, over 1,500 persons. And um, oh, a whole lot of them, the right. VIP winners, which I did recently as well, a couple of months back. Mm -hmm. And um, a host of others unless i have a list in front of me i can't remember them <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot of other events um, she's indeed um, an icon because um, she you know does virtually everything yet she masters them all the difference uh, between uh, blessing and others is that they would um, attempt everything but uh, would have um, lapses mm. in some of those things, but she's just perfect <laughs> across the board. And so, um, in just a couple of uh, seconds, we will be moving to the first guest on the show, um, who uh, will be on this platform to talk about uh, our main passenger, 
Dr. Jeff New Dobret is in Texas, ready to join us uh, to tell his own part of the story about <laughs> our guest. Um, and that will happen just on this platform. Do not go away. He'll be joining us in just a couple of seconds. This is Apex One Radio. Regardless of where you find yourself, communication is one thing you cannot run from. Whether a teacher or a student, a doctor or a nurse, a patient, or even a marketer, whatever thing you find yourself doing, you have to communicate. Whether you do this verbally or non-verbally, whether you use words or just body language, you still communicate. The question is, are you communicating effectively? Are you doing this to the best of your knowledge and to the best of your capacity? Some people struggle a whole lot. I wonder if you may be one of them. If you are wondering how you can scale your productivity and profitability using effective communication, then Blessing Ekiko Global Impact is here. I am Blessing Ekiko, CEO of Blessing Ekiko Global Impact. It is my pleasure to always welcome you to take any of our online and offline trainings, corporate trainings and individual trainings as well. We can boost your productivity and profitability using this particular key aspect, which is effective communication. We bring to you online training programs, which can be taken all over the world. And we also bring to you offline training programs, which we can do for you at your establishment or a location of your choice. Whatever you do, you have to communicate. Mm -hmm. If you are not communicating effectively, you are definitely not getting the profit that you seek. So join us at Blessing the King of Global Impact where we will inspire you to have lasting solutions and lasting profit. And why not scale your productivity and profitability using effective communication? Well, nothing can beat that. Uh, we have um, a guest who pulls uh, sufficient weight on the show today. And like I mentioned, um, there is uh, someone who knows her even better than I do, who has uh, interacted with her professionally, and he has his own story about blessing a Kiko, let's see if um, Jaffney Joyberg is now joining us from Texas here in the United States of America at exactly 11.23 uh, uh, Central Time. He now joins us. Joyberg, welcome to the show. How are you today? Hello, Mr. Ennis. Good, uh, good morning from Texas. Good morning to everybody watching the show. I'm doing good. And you? I am good. Thanks for joining us on the platform. How is Texas this uh, morning? I know it's still morning over there. Yeah, it's still morning. It's uh, it's a cold morning, but it's windy and it's cool. It's great. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Good morning, Joybird. Good morning, blessing. Right. So I, I see Joyberg dressed in Joyberg. Um, <laughs> some brand in there. <laughs> Definitely. You wear the brand. <laughs> you are dressed in your own colors. Always. <laughs> mm, beautiful. Right. So, Joyberg is also a big name. Uh, uh, I mean, he he's a heavyweight as well. Very intellectual. Um, knows quite a lot, you know, especially as far as entrepreneurship, corporate communication, and other things are, are, are concerned. So, uh, Joyberg, we are receiving someone you know so well here uh, on radio today, and we would uh, also love to hear your own part of that story. So, for how long have you known Blessing? First things first. Uh, I think I've known Blessing personally for, what, is it five years? Since we met the first time, 2017, I think. 17, yes. Yes, like physically meeting the first time. I think it was when you had me on your show. for Exactly. First, yes, that was the first time that we met. And uh, from that time, we have had a close uh, um, um friendship and, and and working relationship yeah so mm -hmm. that's that's it's been that long <laughs> right and talking about working relationship uh tell us about um uh, some of uh, the projects uh, both of you have worked uh in um the project that we have worked in maybe i could say like in three levels um mm -hmm. like 
being a guest on her show. Um, I've forgotten the name of the show, but I was a guest on her show. Yeah. And um, the second way that we have worked um, uh, has been where I am speaking at an event and she is the MC of the event. So, okay. and, and that has happened a couple of times in mm. different, different cities and across Cameroon. And um, the third way that we have worked together is where we are co-trainers on the same event or co-speakers okay. uh, on mm -hmm. the same event. So we have pretty much worked together. And of yeah. course, we have worked one-on-one -on -one behind the scenes on, on, mm -hmm. on, on the work that she's doing personally. And, and of course, um, just providing core support to each other based on since we are almost in the same field. Mm -hmm. And um, she, she's the communication boss. So mm -hmm. if I want to learn, <laughs> I go to her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, so um, <clears throat> you've interacted with her um, over the years. Uh, you've seen her works. Um, you definitely have your own assessment about uh, her person and her personality. Mm -hmm. So what, what strikes you about Blessing? Um, I think what strikes me about her is um, her commitment to what she wants to do uh, mm -hmm. because you know, starting a career with, in what she's doing in a, in a country like Cameroon, where it's uh, looking at the industry, particularly it's a young industry, and it's an industry that you need to disrupt before you introduce what you want to produce. Hmm. So it, it, being able to build a brand and to produce some results in, 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 a, in a country hmm. like that um, talks a lot about work ethics, dedication, commitment, passion, and of course, the willingness to mm -hmm. actually do that and, and that's those are the things that i see that she embodies a lot and being conscious of um of what she wants to bring to the table and mm -hmm. and of course being dedicated you know one of the biggest things that i see a lot of young people or young professionals are doing nowadays or for a long time is you know um being everywhere mm. like and that's one thing i've spoken a lot and written a lot about it where your people are everywhere but nowhere but one thing about her is she started with this her communication thing mm. and uh, she's still there and of course what i can only see is a future in it so she understands her niche her purpose her passion her industry and she's committed to to being an industry captain in it and i think that that's very peculiar uh, um now when uh, at that let me say at that young age you know she, she knows what she wants she, she knows the industry she wants and, and she knows what she wants to build and that that really sends a strong message. Mm -hmm. Now, um, she's just um, you know one um, amongst uh, maybe a few very courageous uh, young ladies who uh, you know take such uh, giant steps to 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 succeed. You've interacted with scores of other young people. I know you also train. You also motivate people. What do you think holds young people back these days you know i will um for, from my experience I, I have had the privilege to speak in about 17 african countries and 20 in total across the world mm -hmm. and the african situation is peculiar the african mm -hmm. situation is peculiar is that many young people miss out on the part of becoming Mm -hmm. And I think that that is the biggest hindrance in the journey of success for many young people, mm -hmm. where they have not mastered the art of becoming who they can make the dreams to happen. I always say anybody can have a dream, anybody can set goals, but not everybody have become the people or they have developed. We sorry about uh, that. Apparently, uh, Joe Bed is stuck there, but we will definitely have him back. Uh, some little connectivity issues. Well, I guess he's back. Okay, we we, we lost you, Joe Bed, but you're back. Sorry about that. Okay. Right. Yeah. So 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 I just uh, yeah, continue from, from from you talking about how a lot of young people have lost their their path probably because uh, uh, they're not becoming what they really desire and, to become. And, and exactly. Yes. So my my, my my point is, and from my experience and observation is, you know, the most difficult um, element in the journey of success or in the journey of manifesting your destiny mm -hmm. is you 
being able to become that person that can make it happen. That's the most difficult part. You know, mm -hmm. the, the sleepless nights, uh, um, the, the trainings, the, the coachings, the, the studies, whatever, it's a very difficult season. Mm -hmm. And many young people find it difficult to go through that process. So, and with, with, with the growth of social media now and with the, the possibility where you can sit in your room and with a single post, you can feel that, you know, you are everywhere. People now feel that from that, for, from that perspective, you can be seen as, a, as an influencer, as an expert, as a, as a thought leader, which is beyond that. So I think young people need to go through their process. Like I like to say, it's not about saying that you're intelligent. Proof mm -hmm. of wisdom is result. Proof of knowledge is result. Mm -hmm. And until you go through the process of becoming that industry captain, we will only keep on seeing a lot of young people who want to be, but they are not becoming. Mm -hmm. and, be, and for you to become, you have to be first. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the challenge that, that we have. And I think the more young people get this, the better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you, you just uh, mentioned that proof of intelligence is the outcome, is results. And w when I look at uh, Blessing's case, uh, she's probably succeeding, a lot of people would say, because she had the means and maybe some uh, conducive uh, uh, factors surrounding, you know, her, her, her success. What about those scores of people who may be intelligent, who desire to be there as well, but who do not readily have the means to, to operate? Um, you know, means, I will say that in, in, in whatever I want to do, if means is your challenge, then I think knowledge is your problem. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Because That's in, That's a hard in, one. In, in business and whatever you do, mm. if, if you have a problem of money, you don't have the knowledge to raise money. Okay. If you have a problem of not getting access to opportunities, you lack the knowledge for positioning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So without knowledge and skills, we will always have the complaints. Personally for me, I started my journey in a small town called Kumbo, and Blessing did not start in the United States. Exactly. She started in a town called, called, called Boya, and there, I can give you many examples of people. So, everybody is talented, mm -hmm. but opportunities are not equally distributed. But the good news is, anybody can make up their mind to be where they can get access to opportunities that can enable them to exhibit what they have to offer. Mm -hmm. So means is you may not have the cash, but hey, can you build networks? You may not have the money. Have you become so valuable that they cannot ignore you? Mm. So it's not just people get to look at the. Uh, to me, in 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 the in, in the equation of success, money is always the last for me. Money is never the first. <laughs> and and, and the, the the challenge is many young people put money as the primary factor. Exactly. But I, I think that the most important factor in the journey for you to become uh, 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 um, successful, I always like to break it down into three core elements, value mm -hmm. creation, value expression, and value monetization. Mm -hmm. and, and in the society where we are now, you can literally learn how to create value from where you are. If you can have mm -hmm. access to a smartphone and the internet, you have the most powerful weapon in your hands. Mm. Now you need the resourcefulness to know what to do with it. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, he, <laughs> he's like a I dynamite. Said, <laughs> like I said, he's a, he's a very sound, sound mind. Jobert is his name. Uh, Jobert is here live to talk about our main passenger on board. Just before you go away, Jobert, I want you to to speak to, to, to bless him uh, and become her own motivational speaker uh, <laughs> this morning on radio. So before you go away, just speak to her. What 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 else what else did I say to blessing that I've not told her behind the scenes? So <laughs> well she she knows and and of course I, I, I have said this over and over to her personally and maybe this is the first time I'm saying it in public. Mm. Uh, um I, I believe so much in the work that, that she does and, and I believe that it's it has a future. I mean uh, um I, I, I am a future of work expert. I, I do analysis about the future of work, future organization, the future of industries. 
and of course you guys in media for those who don't know it anybody in media who can create content and enable anybody to communicate and relate you are in one of the most powerful industries on earth for the next even 100 years mm -hmm. one thing that you know robots cannot replace easily is human interaction mm -hmm. and anybody who can create a platform and create structures and create systems to enable that basically will always be in business. So mm. she's in an industry that has a future and, and, and will keep on growing and growing. And, and, and there'll be new challenges, yes, there'll be new opportunities, yes, but as long as there's that mindset where she's consistently learning and becoming better at her craft, I, I think that the, the sky is just the beginning, as they always say, and of course, the world is a playing ground and it's very open. If you are the right player, play the game and you'll definitely win. So, as always, I believe in you. Yay. Keep on doing it. The and world I'll always is, be there to support where I can. The world Thank is you. a playing ground. If you are a right player, you will definitely have your position on the field. Job, I want to thank you so much. It could never have been better said. Wonderful uh, contribution there. Do have a fantastic rest of the day out there. He always Texas. says you are rare and you are remarkable. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take care. Mm. You are the action. Okay. Um, whew, just like he said, one more is there to see. I'm really very grateful. Thank you so much, um, Doc. You always have um, this way of hyping me. <laughs> it has this tendency of getting me back on my hmm. on my feet. There are moments I get dis distracted. Yeah, and he's very disciplined, you know. Hmm. <laughs> and then there are also moments I feel overwhelmed. And then I would share. I have a couple of other people I speak with. But when I speak with him, mm -hmm. he always has this way of encouraging like, hey, mm -hmm. you can do this. You've been doing this already. And it's normal for challenges to come. The question is, what are you doing to weather the storm? So I'm really very grateful. What are you doing to weather the storm? This is Apex One Radio. And our current passenger is uh, Blessing Ekiko, who uh, gets across the board because she does uh, so, so many things, yet uh, she has a mastery of all of what she does, uh, including books. She's written books as well. How many books have you written so far? Well, I've done two. One is C. It's in the pipeline. It's coming. Oh, okay, <laughs> beautiful. Yes. So the, there is one in both French and English mm -hmm. that is preserved for purpose. Okay. And then the other professional guide for mm -hmm. screen and radio presenting, which mm -hmm. is only in English. Now, preserved for purpose mm -hmm. is basically about my journey, mm -hmm. a part of my journey, mm -hmm. I must say. I mentioned earlier that I have dealt with pain. Mm -hmm. And um, this is it. Mm -hmm. This one has a whole lot to tell about mm -hmm. um, an experience of my life mm -hmm. that took almost 13 years mm -hmm. to overcome. Mm. Well, um, we will have her on Apex Snapshot sometime in December to have uh, a better diagnosis, you know, of these this works. Uh, usually, we 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 do that a lot with authors. So her books, uh, you know, is an entire show yeah. <laughs> on its own. <laughs> That's true, right? <laughs> so, like I said, we'll come back to her two books and the one that is in the pipeline, uh, you know, in the next couple of weeks to come. Yeah. And you would see uh, Blessing Ekiko from a completely different perspective. Still to come, we speak with uh, Ken George. Ken George um, has his own story to tell about our guests in today's edition of the show. Meanwhile, we 
uh, are almost, um, you know, we are still a little bit moving to the end or to our destination on this show. This is Apex One Radio. Do not go away. Our current passenger is uh, Blessing Ekiko. Uh, Blessing, welcome back. Thank you. Right, so Ken George is uh, the next who decided to come on the show and uh, talk about what he knows about <laughs> you. Tell us about him before we, we, we even receive him. Yeah, Ken George is also one I will call an entrepreneur. Okay. He is into music as well, oh, an wow. artist, mm -hmm. and runs his own business, like I earlier mentioned, an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. He's into leadership as well mm -hmm. and spirituality. Mm -hmm. He's also been one of our trainees mm -hmm. and one I also call a friend who's mm -hmm. been very supportive, mm -hmm. both with sharing our content talking with me mm -hmm. in times of challenges as well mm -hmm. and particularly he is the one who has been doing the recent flyers or the mm -hmm. recent quotes oh, we've wow. been having so <laughs> he's the brain behind that <laughs> okay so in which state is he oh presently he's in cameroon okay yeah i'm i hope i'm pretty sure about that yes cameroon mm. because he's often in and out mm -hmm. so but i think he's in cameroon right now and from there, he now joins us at exactly 19 minutes to one here in the studio of Apex One Radio. Ken George, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so uh, delighted mm -hmm. to be part of this show. How are you today? I'm doing great. And you? Mm -hmm. I'm doing great with thank God. <laughs> so, um, from what part of Cameroon are you speaking? Boya. Okay. How is Boya? The this southwest evening? region. How is Boya this evening? Boya is cold, mm. sound, calm, <laughs> and cool. <laughs> Beautiful. Right. So we brought you to the platform because we had a special guest uh, on this show. Um, and we told you have some ample knowledge of uh, Blessing Kiko. For how long have you known Blessing? I've known Blessing now for about three to four years. Mm -hmm. Three to four years. And during these three to four years it has been one amazing experience to another okay <laughs> that's beautiful <laughs> so tell us tell us how you, your paths uh, cross and uh, where did you meet her in what projects have both of you uh, worked okay i was uh i have this habit of um getting involved in as much study program as i can get to help enhance myself mm -hmm. so while i was doing some research both online offline um somebody recommended me to her that she's doing an awesome program which mm -hmm. is beggy a program that she runs she has been running for years now and it has been an, an amazing program so mm -hmm. i did research about the program did research about her and the stuffs i got were amazing so i had to take that grab that gap and just enter so when i sent her a message and told her that i want to be part of her program and that was how i took part in the program and the program so far has really been an amazing one it has helped me and since after that experience me being a a trainee under her mm. she she <laughs> is also a friend a leader and i really i really love her so much because and i've been watching her on facebook i've been mm. watching her stuff uh or both online offline sometimes i get to have programs that i come across her but during this training program that i wanted to get involved into that was how we met and 
that's how the relationship started. Mm. Beautiful. So, um, what are some of the things that you know strike you about her, her leadership and, and and other things? Okay, I'll start with decorum. Mm. <laughs> I will start with decorum. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> she's she's someone that she really likes decorum in all her work, mm -hmm. whatever she puts her hand into, whatever she wants to do, whichever event that she wants to MC, she wants to lead. Oh, she just likes decorum. That's one aspect that I like about her. But right. even in in her appearance, you see decorum. And you also see someone that is disciplined, right. very disciplined, both in her line of du duty and also mm -hmm. in her Christian life. She's really disciplined, really mm -hmm. disciplined. Right. Thank you. That's um, beautiful. And you would definitely love to work with her again and again, I guess. For, for sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Any time, any day. So Beautiful. we keep shining our light. Yes, we keep shining our light. That's it. Right. All right, George. Just before you go away, just tell us about um, your organization and uh, a little bit about the projects that are in your pipeline. Okay, um, I run a record label called uh, KG Global Empire, okay. uh, which is a music uh, label. Mm -hmm. um, it's purely gospel. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been having, I've been organizing some events now for some years. Mm -hmm. I organize events, bring talent together to so showcase their talent. And uh, it's basically, it's just to help them bring them to the limelight and expose them to some things about life and help them also to really enhance their talent. There are some that they have the talent, they have to discover it. You help them to discover it. Some, you help them to grow the talent, help them to improve on it. So, so far, so good. That has been it. And I've been working on some projects now to um, organize some other events that is also really going to help uh, our community because we have been having a lot of challenges in our country, which has made it in a way that um we find it difficult to grow but we yeah. have to break we have to cross that bridge mm -hmm. we have to cross that bridge and cameroon really needs people that will step up to help bring that change uh we keep talking about the change but somebody has to take the bull by the horn and you help to bring the change so i've been working with other people uh she's also one of the amazing people that i'm working with mm -hmm. um i get to share some of my stuff my projects that i have i share mm -hmm. it with her uh so and i also mm -hmm. partner with other events they are mm -hmm. friends that they have their own event i partner with them to see that the program is a success as mm -hmm. long as it has to promoting talent so i'm there to help to promote the talent to make the talent Somebody has to take the bull by the horn, and she's doing just that. <laughs> the words of uh, Ken George, who was here to tell his own story about our main passenger on board this radio ride. This is Apex One Radio. If you are just joining us, then thank you so much. Just a couple of minutes, we will be reaching our destination on this radio radio journey well um time for us to take the last musical break then when we come back we'll be negotiating the last stretch of this radio trip
I give you the glory, I give you the praise. Beautiful piece of music there by Cameroonian uh, gospel artist based in Dayton, Ohio. Erica C is her name. Music release a couple of weeks ago. Music which is still in our music taste boards. It has put the time to nine minutes to one here in the studio of Apex One Radio. Thank you so much for joining us from Helsinki in Finland. Christiana Tellen. Then special thanks to you, Ola Wafemi Adama. Mm. Hmm. She says, permit my grammar, simply explosional. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Ekule. Jamia, who is very proud of blessing. Thank you so much, Emmanuel P. Emmanuel is um, uh, a broadcaster here on Apex One Radio, and he's enjoying the show from the east side of Columbus. Thank you so much for watching the show. If you are listening to us in uh, Europe and, of course, on the continent, this is on board with Ernest Kanjo, do not go away. Don't forget the spiritual part, Sunday school. <clears throat> Our passenger since the show started more than one hour ago is Blessing Ekiko. Blessing, like I mentioned earlier on, uh, also heals from the civil society. She's also a business leader. And talking about business, she runs the Blessing Ekiko Global Impact. Is it an NGO? Oh, the Blessing Ekiko Global Impact is a sole proprietorship company, okay. communication company mm -hmm. in um, Cameroon. But of course, our work go cross, cuts across Africa and the world. And what is the mission of that organization? Okay, with Beggy, we are impassioned with in equipping individual and corporate bodies okay. with the right or appropriate communication mm -hmm. knowledge to be able to scale their performance, productivity for general profitability. Okay. So it could be interpersonal or mm -hmm. it could be corporate mm -hmm. at the job site or in your regular day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. We work with spouses as well, that is couples. Mm -hmm. That's husbands and wives mm -hmm. who need to boost their communication with each other. Okay. We also work with students. We work with academic um, institutions mm -hmm. and generally companies mm. as a, in a whole, rather. How old is the company? Beggy is two years old now. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we, talking about track records, um, mm -hmm. so what is it that you can show already? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, we have we have had the opportunity to train mm -hmm. ambassadors. That's how we call them. Okay. Ambassadors across Africa. Mm -hmm. And also we've had those in the US and in the UAE. Mm -hmm. Over the course of a year, we had about 10 different sessions online mm -hmm. like this one you have mm -hmm. the beggy certification programs mm -hmm. four certified mcs screen all tv presenters mm -hmm. speakers and corporate bodies mm -hmm. we've been able mm -hmm. to work with four major companies we have press print as one of them mm -hmm. that's press print cameroon mm -hmm. we've been able to work with um companies outside mm -hmm. the country for cameroon at the time we have Mogi GLS, Mogi Global Leadership School, where mm -hmm. we've been we've trained with them. We also have U Square. There's U Square. Mm -hmm. um, there is also um, what's this one out? Yalda. Okay. Yes, in Liberia, mm -hmm. we've also had is it Yaldi? You know, youth programs mm -hmm. in and out of the country. Mm -hmm. So now we have about two hundred trained personnels that's individually we're not talking about for the companies now mm -hmm. and then 
looking at the training events we have had to be part of, mm -hmm. we've had thousands of them because these events have a different range of audience. Right. So we also have Beggy doing one-on-one -on -one trainings. Mm -hmm. Some of these persons, if they come for one-on-one -on -one coaching, we don't make mention of them because their cases are usually unique. Mm -hmm. Yes, but for, on a general note, we even have our graduates, maybe a video or so. Mm -hmm. We have our graduates who tell you about their experience so far. So if you want to pick up on professional emceeing or you want to be a professional screen presenter, you want to work on your presentational skills as a speaker or trainer, or you want to boost the communication skill of your team that is in your organization, institution, or whatever it may be. It could be church. Mm -hmm. It could also be a church because we work on internal, mm -hmm. internal communication, mm -hmm. top to bottom, bottom to top. What are the rules that obtain? Mm -hmm. What are the do's and don'ts? What are some of the things that your team members should uphold mm -hmm. both in and out of the company to give your company the perfect face mm -hmm. outside there. Your PR should be very, um, it should be very um, important mm -hmm. and should be taken with no joke mm -hmm. by every team member. But how do you do this if you cannot communicate mm -hmm. with them? So we work with bosses being able to communicate with their employees. Mm -hmm. We work with employees who can be able to communicate and relate with their colleagues and also your clients. Mm -hmm. We work basically on that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So with Beggy, we've been able to do this in the past two years. We have an annual event that's Wonder Working Word, where we equip the audience mm -hmm. on the best practices in different aspects of their lives when it comes to communication, mm -hmm. regardless of what field you are in. Because you can agree with me that whether you are a teacher or a doctor, whether you are a nurse, a student, whichever part you find yourself in, you definitely need to communicate. Mm -hmm. And if you cannot communicate right, then how do you flow in the community? Mm -hmm. It is a key part of our life. Communication is uh, the the pivot of every mm -hmm. everything. Now we've been able to see what your organization has put up uh, since creation, and like uh, the various speakers said, uh, you know, you 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 don't just do it for the sake of doing it. Yeah. You want to make it look really professional, mm -hmm. presentable, and you know, worth it. This, I would imagine, you know, requires a lot of means as well. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't organize all those events mm -hmm. uh, use, using stones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you use Not money. at all. <laughs> you use money. <laughs> so tell us about uh, how you've been able to sustain these. Any okay. partnerships, sponsorships? Of course. This is one of the reasons I said at the start of the program that I'm really grateful to God because in my journey, it has not been all about me. Mm -hmm. There have been support every step of the way. Mm -hmm. I literally would say that what I have been rich with is the wealth of people. Right. The wealth of people. It is very important to have the right people when you are embarking on any journey. From the scratch, where I had to talk about the initiative, mm -hmm. having the right person to talk to who can structure everything, mm -hmm. that was my first blessing. And then along the line, you have support of others coming in. Mm -hmm. I mentioned um, Michael Adiko. When we talk about Beggy, the branding, the structuring, you have his stamp there. Like he has been seriously a part of it. He has been the core person who has shaped a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. Now, I also had friends who came in, those who worked on our logo, like Prosper Menko, 
who has been the person who has designed both mm -hmm. Beggy and P4, that's Base Pillar Foundation, mm -hmm. both logos were done by him. And it was his way of supporting me. Mm. So you can imagine what I would have paid if I had to have someone do this for me to give them money mm. at the end of the day. Mm. So I've really been blessed to have people step in every single time that I need them. We've mm. had Mr. Abba Abdurrahman, oh, Dr. Abba Abdurrahman, divisional officer, Buya Cameroon, who has been remarkably by my side since the moment I encountered him. He has been there and we've been doing quite a lot together. One of the programs I've been doing is um, with his, pro his, um, mm -hmm. his organization, U Square. Yes. And we have the mentorship program where I, was, I have been the host mm -hmm. alongside Anira. I've also had my family. Mm -hmm. Sometimes <laughs> doing this thing is not easy. Yeah? <laughs> you will sit at home mm -hmm. and then have to calculate the amount of money that needs to be spent for an event. Mm -hmm. And then you look at what you have. You look at what the budget here is. And you feel like, Lord, did you call me or did I call myself? <laughs> <laughs> because I don't think this is what you had you planned for You just feel like me. you've beaten more that you can chew. <laughs> exactly. And then you have my family giving me all the support. Mm -hmm. My father, Apia Wilson Hansel. Mm -hmm. My mom, Ebanga Tambe Wilson. My siblings, you know, Ekode Wilson, Marion Wilson, Thelma Wilson. People always wonder why I keep saying Wilson. Mm -hmm. It's my family name. <laughs> so you have them there. They've been supporting. I've had friends like Joybird mm -hmm. who also give you that moral support and then coaching at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons I always say when you want to embark on a journey, go with people. Right. And the right set of people. I've had people praying for me. I've had people who are ready to catch me when I fall. So I'm really grateful for all of this. I couldn't do it all on my own. Base Pillar Foundation as mm -hmm. well. The volunteers have been remarkable. Mm -hmm. Yes, the crisis came and kicked off. It kicked us um, off the curve. But you have people who are still coming to support. Royalty World is a partner mm -hmm. with Base Pillar Foundation. The Agbondako uh, Foundation in Canada. Mm -hmm. It's a partner as well. We've been able to work with U Square, like I mentioned, for Beggy. We've had Mogi GLS as a partner for Beggy. Mm -hmm. um, we've literally worked with a bunch of people. Okay, we have Bleeker Foundation mm -hmm. in the Netherlands for Base Pillar Foundation. All of these people came in just by seeing some of the work we mm -hmm. were doing. And then some started with us from scratch and we have been able to get to this point. So I really want to say a big shout out to every volunteer mm -hmm. and then to all of our trainees at Beggy. They've been doing a great job. They share the content. They talk much about the content. Mm -hmm. You have most of our present trainees mm -hmm. who came in through referrals. Mm -hmm. You have our Ambassadors who will tell you, you must take this program, get to coach blessing. And they do that. Mm. So I'm really grateful. The church has been there for me. My friends have been there for me. My family has been there for me. Coaches have been there for me. So I when, am a helped girl. Beautiful. <laughs> when you embark on a journey, go along with people Keep. and of course the right people blessing a kiko is her name guests in today's edition of on board with anna's kanju we are steadily but gradually moving to the end of this radio journey we've just negotiated our last stretch so since um we want to keep being inspired and motivated. Let me come back to you in one of your jottings a couple of days ago. You said you are a product of everything 
you let into your mental space. Mm -hmm. You are a product of everything you let into, into your, your mental, mental space. space. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. Yes, of course. You are a product of everything you lent you let into mm -hmm. your uh, mental space. Mm -hmm. Why do I say this? What you watch, what you listen to, mm -hmm. will soon be what you will manifest. Okay. What you give your attention to will soon become your manifestation. Mm -hmm. Take an example. You always watch horror movies. Mm -hmm. There's a high possibility sooner or later you start having nightmares. Okay. And you would always look at the world from a dark perspective. Mm -hmm. Oh, everybody is a suspect. Oh, this person is about to perform witch, witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is what you have let in. You need to guard the gateways to your mind, your eyes, your ears. The kinds of music you listen to will determine the emotions you will have. Music comes with a spirit behind it. Okay. What do I mean by this? It carries emotion. It's alive. Mm -hmm. The words you listen to can definitely play on your emotion. Mm -hmm. Same goes with what you watch. Now, it goes with what you listen to when mm. you're with friends. Imagine you're with friends who always talk about uh, development, personal development, like mm -hmm. my kind of friends. You have Dr. Joybird. You have um, Coach Njisong, mm -hmm. Coach Brenda. We have those are the kinds of people I have around me. So imagine when we see it, what we could be talking about. We will not be gossiping, mm -hmm. talking about other people, or if we have to talk about someone, it will be ref like reference to mm -hmm. something they have done, something great they have done. Mm -hmm. So imagine that you're only discussing negative things. That is what you will manifest. If you're discussing personal development, the mm -hmm. moment you are alone. Your subconscious mind will replay it. And then you start getting into personal development notes, books, videos, and more. Mm -hmm. You can't say you want to stop drinking and you hang around drunkards. Hmm. That will not help. You can't say you want to be rich and all of your friends are poor. Hmm. You can't say you want to be an A student and all of your friends are F students. How then do you want to manifest what you expect yourself to manifest? How do you want to manifest yourself? Um, what you expect, you know, like you can't say you want to be an A student, yet all the people who hang around you are, are F students. students. So be uh, a guard to your brain's the gateways, uh, you know, gateway. To your <laughs> Some great learning here with uh, <laughs> Coach Blessing. Uh, <laughs> did you learn all of this or just life experience? <laughs> <laughs> life experience has taught me quite a mm. lot. My father, my mom says, I, I have the experience of mm -hmm. a 50 year old <laughs> at my age because of a lot of things uh -huh. that have happened to me. But like I said, mm. when you mentor people when you counsel people mm -hmm. you get to hear a lot of things mm -hmm. and that's how i pick up on other things but mm -hmm. most of it is inspired by the holy spirit oh beautiful so you seem to have uh, a lot of attachment to value creation mm -hmm. value deployment and you see if all of this is put in place then virtually monetization will follow tell us about of course that. now like joy said mm. i just i just recalled and then i jotted that if you do not have value to give, mm -hmm. you cannot expect to receive value. Okay. Value could be monetary, mm -hmm. all right, the one you receive, or it could be support mm -hmm. from others. Now, you have people who often say, I don't have the opportunities. The question is, have you created right. one for yourself? Mm -hmm. If you say you want to be a public speaker and you never speak, how then do you want to become proficient in it? So what I'm trying to say is this, look at yourself, look at what you can do, mm -hmm. no matter how little, and do not consider any knowledge insignificant. Mm -hmm. Because someone, I just saw a post and someone is training people on how to walk on heels mm -hmm. and she's making a lot of money, right. <laughs> like so much of it, mm -hmm. just on moving on heels. Mm -hmm. And you are seated there. 
you know something that someone out there does not know. Mm -hmm. That's the value. Mm -hmm. Now, when you give a pinch of this value, you can now give cost under. Mm -hmm. I always advise never give cost mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. you give value. Mm -hmm. Make sure the value goes first. Then the people will be the one to tell you, I want to pay mm -hmm. for this. So have the value to give, be able to deploy it, get the right people you need to coach you if you need it, and then be able to monetize it at the end of the day. But it starts with value. That reminds me of uh, uh, something I was speaking with um, a young uh, lady the other day, and we're talking about value. So you know how uh, your back itches, right? Mm -hmm. And you're unable to, to scratch, scratch it. it. Now, some uh, smart fellow uh, invented uh, a, a, a wooden uh, uh, spoon. spoon. Looks like a spoon. Uh -huh. So designed in the form of a hand that mm -hmm. could reach that spot. Yes, right. To, to it. And bam, that became uh, a, a, exactly. you know, ex, you know, an explosion. Exactly. Because people needed something like that. Mm -hmm. So he found a solution for it, and that became business. That is it. Finding a problem to solve. Mm -hmm. Who knew that um, face, how do they call it, nose mask was mm -hmm. going to be a thing? Right. We said nose mask <laughs> as, like in Cameroon, we we'll say, you don't hammer. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> Who knew that hand sanitizer was going to hammer? Mm -hmm. But somebody created it to mm -hmm. kill germs. Right. And then at some point, everyone it hammered. needed it. It hammered. <laughs> you know. Like I will hammer too. Mm, sure. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, we can have this conversation for days, <laughs> yeah. non-stop, but, um, you know, uh, locomotive engineer Maxel Ajit is already indicating their red <laughs> light, which means we will need to be packing our bags out of the studio That's anytime right. from now. This is Apex One Radio. We are broadcasting live from the United States of America. And we've come to the last stretch of our radio journey. We are just uh, two minutes away from our destination, and it will be the end of uh, this edition of On Board with Anes Kanjo. So when you are not on the computer, uh, <laughs> maybe uh, working on your next training, when mm -hmm. you are not training, when you are not uh, doing some emceeing, yeah. What else could Blessing be caught doing? What are your hobbies? Okay, I will be dancing, singing, okay. watching a beautiful movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and funny enough, that was in Cameroon, but I love parks. Oh, beautiful. I love natural settings to mm -hmm. be able to go to a lakeside, mm -hmm. go to a park. Just sit there under the, the how do you call it the stars mm -hmm. and enjoy the scenery because mm -hmm. my father in heaven has done a great job <laughs> in creating this earth so i want to savor it so it is singing for me mm -hmm. dancing mm -hmm. i love dancing a lot mm -hmm. um watching movies okay. of course mm -hmm. like i said visiting natural settings maybe a zoo mm -hmm. a botanic garden and what else do I really do? I love chatting with children, playing mm. with children. You know, I oh, play with beautiful. kids a lot. <laughs> right. So I'm so, a school teacher, so we play with kids. <laughs> all right. So uh, a bowl of hot kwakoko Bible um, <laughs> would do me some good. You'll be my friend if you offer me that. What about you? Mm, let's see. What would that be? Hot mpufish. Oh wow! And red plantain. <laughs> Or All right. hot equan. That sounds good. <laughs> Great. All right. So I know you love uh, gospel music. Yes. Mm, great. So who is that gospel music artist you would love to listen to oh, again and again? Uh, Nathaniel Bassi. Okay. Mm, Kerry Hawthorne. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lauren Diago. Mm. Oh, wow. I love her. <laughs> 
Her music always has this way, gets me to a place of prayer. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm always meditating when Beautiful. I listen to her. Messi Chinwo, mm -hmm. Prosper Menko, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eta. Anita yes, Eta. Etanian. Yes, mm -hmm. I do love I do love his work. Beautiful. Favorite color? What's my favorite color? Do I have a favorite color? Royal blue. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Interesting. So, um, favorite African city? Favorite African city would be Kigali say, now. Kigali, I know you're going to say <laughs> Kigali. <laughs> Everybody would say Kigali if you've been there. <laughs> and even for those of us who've not been to Kigali, you still love it. We wish to be there. Kigali is just a breath of fresh air. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Role model. Mm, of course. And I'll mention Oprah. Mm -hmm. I really do admire her mm -hmm. a lot. When mm. it comes to the speaking field, Nicole, mm -hmm. um, Lisa Nicole. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in the spiritual world, I love Sherry. Mm. Shariah, rather. I love her so much. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth. And um, oh, I, I've given mostly women. Mm -hmm. That's quite something. But okay. I love Tyler Perry too. Beautiful. <laughs> now, a blessing. There are scores of uh, young girls Can out I there. Can I mention my mo my role model in Cameroon? Okay. That will be none other than Fotabe Ermin. Oh, wow. Great. <laughs> okay. Right, so I was going to say that there are scores of uh, young girls out there, yeah. some of whom you've you've trained, yeah. and who are looking up to you as their role model, um, who would also desire to have, you know, some of the achievements you have had. Uh, but like I said, which uh, you and Joybeck uh, kind of debunked. There is still the problem of not having the means to explore those given God-given talents. Like some people really want to do it, mm -hmm. yet they don't really have that means, you know, be okay. it whatever means. If you have an advice for these aspiring young mm -hmm. women and even anybody who aspires to hit the bar, mm -hmm. what would that be? Okay, this is what I'm going to say. Start with where you are, start where you are and with what you have. Mm -hmm. When I started Base Pillar Foundation, I didn't have the means. When we talk about financial means, mm -hmm. every time I talk about this, I started by using a new bedspread. Mm -hmm. If I should show you the picture, you would think it was a tablecloth, but it was my bedspread. Mm -hmm. I had just bought it mm -hmm. and I had to use it as my tablecloth. Mm -hmm. All of the speakers who came for that event were people already in my circle. Mm -hmm. I spoke to lecturers at the university. Mm -hmm. I spoke to big friends of mine. I spoke to elders in the church. And I was like, can I have you dish out the knowledge you have mm -hmm. to impact these ladies who will be coming for this training? And they were like, okay, I will be there. You... Joybert didn't say this like just because he wants to say it. Mm -hmm. You have a context. Many of you do go to church, don't you? You do go to school. You have teachers, you have friends, mm -hmm. you have colleagues. Start with those people. Look among them. There are people who have value. Mm -hmm. Some of them have not even had the opportunity to dish it out. If you're looking for venues for those who want to be speakers or you have something in there you want it, let it out. Talk to your teachers in school. Can I use this classroom on Saturday since there are no students coming in? Mm -hmm. Or your pastor. Can I use the Sunday school hall or the multi-purpose hall mm -hmm. since people will not be using it? And then when you're doing that, give them value. What they will benefit? Mm -hmm. What would it be? In school, sir, you've always taught us about personal development. You've always taught us about cleanliness and hygiene. Mm -hmm. We would love to create a platform where all of your students can get this knowledge for free. And then you will see that he himself will encourage his students. 
to come for it because there is value to be given. When you do that, the right people will start seeing it and then they will start coming in. Base Pillar Foundation had a lot of professors in it. Why? They saw that I was doing something already, no matter how little. And the question was, bless you, how can I support your next event? Mm -hmm. I'm like, so we'll need cheers. Okay, I'll be the one to rent the chairs for you. What else do you need? I will need a speaker. Oh, we have a speaker. Then you have a lecturer. I will say, would you need a projector? I'm like, yes, I have one in my office, so you can come get it. So looking at it, uh, looking at it, Ernest, you realize that I didn't use money. I used people. So use the people. And we are at um, a stage in life right now where everything is at your beck and call. Social media. Use social media. You're not going to pay Mark Zuckerberg to put what your post on Facebook, would you? But you already have the account. Make use of it. We often say if your social media account is not making money, then it's not making sense. Start using it for something. Let the right people see you. Put yourself out there. Don't wait for it to come meet you. Take the bull by the horn. You the young lady, you the young man, start with where you are what you have and the people around you the right people will see you and be an expert i mean work toward becoming an expert don't sell mediocrity and expect people to want to buy it don't sell mediocrity and expect to have people buy it you do not need to pay mark zuckerberg to have a Facebook account that is monetized. You already have that account, just make use of it. And if it's not monetized, then it doesn't just make sense. Use people and money is the last thing. It is a question of success. This is Apex One Radio. It's been a great journey. We've come to its final destination. Thank you so much, uh, One Adam, uh, for being a passenger on board this radio ride. Tata Nambekere also rode with us. Back in Ivo Elango was one of the passengers we had on board this radio ride. Ganuela Echik joined us from the um, U. A -E, one of the passengers on board as well. Then we had Thelma Wilson, who also wrote with us, just like you, Christiana Teren, you wrote with us as well. Rose Wellerson, thank you so much. Jacob Ayuk was also a passenger on board, just like Adama Ola Femi and Ecole Jemia. Grace Boise was on board as well, just like Emmanuel. Yeah. Maxel Adit was our locomotion engineer. Mm. He guided us from Valsut in Germany. Our main passenger was uh, Blessing Ekiko. Is there something which we did not say, which you would have wanted to add, or there's something we said which we shouldn't have said? <laughs> I don't think there's anything we said okay. which we shouldn't have said. <laughs> but again, Blessing is just an individual who's trying to make the best out of what she has been blessed with. One way or the other, I'm here to serve, to coach, to train, to mentor, and also to learn. I do not know it all. I know the little, and I put it out there. You too can do the same. Base Pillar Foundation is also there to help teenage mothers, young parents, also, it is there to help um, young men who need to balance up in life, the right, keeping the right relationships, knowing how to manage your social media um, handles and things like that so that you can have the best out of life. Ernest, I did mention that there were some mistakes that people do in communication mm -hmm. and I'm just going to list it. Mm -hmm. So if you are one who has been practicing it, try to work over or work on it. So common mistakes that people do when it comes to communication and which you must avoid is one, assuming that everyone understands or thinks the same way as you do or inactive listening. Also, you, or you have ignoring the tone of your own voice when you speak. 
letting your emotions overpower your logic, holding back your thoughts and ideas when they are needed. We also have reacting more and responding less. You listen just to react, not to respond. That is something you should avoid. Also avoid getting distracted easily when communicating with others. And the last but not the least, stop criticizing and choose to understand when talking with people. Everyone has something to share, just as you do. It's high time you start learning from them too, so that you can add the knowledge you already have. So these are some common communication mistakes that many people do and must avoid it. On your social media handles, you also need to avoid certain things. Do not post videos or photos that will not benefit your work or what you are hoping for the world to know about you. That would just be the little takeout I would give to anyone who's watching or who's listening out there. I hope it could be useful in your life. You can chat me up on WhatsApp or you can get to my Facebook handle, Wilson Blessing Ekiko. Or you can also get to my LinkedIn, Blessing Ekiko. I am on YouTube, Blessing Ekiko. And our page, Blessing Ekiko Global Impact. And you get me. My name is Anas Kanjo. I was the conductor of this radio ride, which has come to its final destination at exactly 1.28 Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much. The message has definitely gone across, and it's now your turn. Rise up and be a mover and a shaker, just like blessings. Kiko. May God bless you. Do have a fantastic rest of the week and look forward to having a wonderful weekend. Bye for now. seen a man like you I've never seen a man like you oh God you are beautiful you are beautiful I've never seen a man like you I've never seen a man like you oh God you are beautiful come on and say Oh God, oh you are beautiful, I've never seen a man like you, yeah, oh
Leonetta, that's my name, boy. 